Welcome everyone to our Connection Zone webinar. Um, my name is Charlene Gulak and I'm the Economic Development Advisor uh, serving Parkland, the Midwestern, Western region, so the, the, west, the west side of the province um, with ARMED, uh, Rural Manitoba Economic Development Corporation. We're just very pleased that everyone is able to, uh, to join us this morning. Um, I would uh, like to take a moment um, just to acknowledge that our office in Brandon is located on Treaty 2 lands, the traditional homelands of the Dakota, Anishinaabek, Oji Cree, Cree, Diné, and Métis people. However, our team works extensively throughout Manitoba in the lands of Treaties 1 through 4 and the southern portion of Treaty 5. Our MED respects the treaties that were made on these lands and will work um, in collaboration with others together. We commit to reconciliation along the path to economic prosperity. Uh, we are recording this session um, just so we can we can uh, put this information together for our, our virtual library. I would like to um, hand things over to Deanna who's going to uh, to lead today's content and we're going to start with an a, a roundtable introduction and she's going to introduce the ARMED team. Good morning, everyone. And uh, yeah, uh, that's me, Deanna Fritvinson. I know most of the folks on the call. Uh, welcome and thank you for joining us. I know we've kind of been juggling this uh, particular location, but I'm thankful you were all able to uh, attend and, and join us. Um, I work in the Interlake and Eastern region of uh, Manitoba from the 53rd parallel south is the location for our ARMED. Um, office. I'd now like to uh, pass on to Michael so he can introduce himself. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Michael Asante, and I'm the Research and Policy Analyst for our med. Um, I think I've met most of you here, so I'm looking forward to such an interesting um, discussion today. Thanks. Thanks, Michael. Over to you, Fumi. Good morning, everyone. My name is Fumlola Biela Odetola. I'm the marketing coordinator at Harmed. Uh, I just came to Canada April 14, and yesterday was my first Halloween. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Fumi is our, our master craft uh, marketing person, and you can tell by all of the great stuff she's been putting out for us on our site. Now over to you, Margot. Hi, everyone. Uh, I am so excited to see so many people on this call. And again, I we apologize for the juggling that has been going on. It's been um a bit of a a bit of an exercise between uh, flu bugs and storms and everything else. Um, as you have probably seen, we're doing a bit of a realignment of responsibilities and roles. That's something that will be an ongoing process in our mid to make sure that everybody's getting the best service from the right people um, as we go forward. So um, you see some different faces than you, you might have been expecting on the call, but that's uh, we want to make sure that we're always providing that exemplary service to everybody. This is a really exciting series for us. The connection zones, while our intent is to always have them in person, um, this is our first series and um, the purpose of them is to be able to bring people together, to be able to talk up in detail about specific issues and opportunities. And the investment readiness is something that we hear lots about in community. It's something we hear lots about from the provincial government. We're not anticipating that's going to change at all with the new administration. Um, mandate letters just came out to the department, so we'll be pouring through those over the next few hours um, this afternoon just to be able to see how everything fits together. So if you haven't looked at mandate letters, I encourage you to go and find them on the Open Manitoba website because they really do help start to understand where the where things happen with the various departments and how responsibilities align. I know that the Economic Development Investment Trade and Natural Resources is super excited to have apprenticeship moving into that area because it really shows that there is a commitment to uh, addressing the needs for trades and how that affects up the economy overall. So that's, that's one exciting um, thing that I know is in the mandate letters. Um, 
as you go through these toolkits, there's going to be some more launched later this month. We've got five uh, ready to go, well, three ready to go, two that are in design, and they'll come out in January. Uh, we'll also be making announcements around the regional profiles that have historically been done by uh, Manitoba. They've been evolved so that we will be taking care of them moving forward, and Michael's going to talk a little bit more about that and the announcements and, and when they'll be out and available. And then uh, he's also going to just give you a friendly reminder on the data services site that is there. Um, my friendly reminder is don't go and create your own re community profiles, link to those ones, let us and our, and our hired service do all of the work for you. And that way they stay updated and, and current and you're always have the same information for comparative purposes with other communities. Um, I know how busy you guys are, so uh, that's one way you can save yourself many hours a year is uh, just letting us do that heavy lifting for you so that you can focus on on other things rather than creating charts and graphs. Again, thrilled to see everybody here looking forward to the conversation, and I'm going to uh, just turn off my camera here now. I know that rural broadband can sometimes be a bit of a challenge, so one less video feed you don't need is going to make it easier for all. Thanks, Margo. I just wanted to also acknowledge our uh, super efficient uh, executive uh, assistant, who is Erin Gonzalez. She's not joining us today, but she she's the glue and the staple uh, to keep or, our organization on task. Um, I'd just like to move over to Eric, if you could give a just provide your name, your location, what, what is it that you do? Right. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Eric Forster. I'm a Regional Economic Development Officer with the uh, Crocus Country EDC. We are funded by three municipalities, the town of Melita, uh, the municipality of Two Borders, and the municipality of Brenda Wascada. And we're uh, an arm's length economic development group representing those three municipalities. Um, if I might mention, Margo, I got to chuck a little bit with your last comment there about letting you guys do all the heavy work because the uh, announcements of all the data uh, collaboration, everything came available just as soon as I finished all of mine. So <laughs> just the See, way I it goes. But... Eric, I warned you guys before you went down that path to call me. <laughs> right. Well, but good morning, everybody. <laughs> That's okay. You've done it once. You know what's involved. Next time around, you can just let it be. <laughs> yeah, never again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo to you for getting it done. Uh, next on my screen, I have Tiffany Cameron. Good morning, everybody. I'm <clears throat> Tiffany Cameron, and I work... Um, on contract with the RM of Wallace Woodworth. And so our, we're in the far uh, west along the number one highway. Um, and we're a fairly large municipality formed from the amalgamations in 2015. So we take in the communities of um, Cola, Elkhorn, and all the way to Kenton, and a little bit even on the east side of uh, Sioux Valley First Nation. So very large community from Saskatchewan border to Sioux Valley. Um, I work from October through February every year on contract with the RM Wallace Woodworth. And then the rest of the year, I am a small business owner in the town of Verdon. Thanks, Tiffany. Welcome. Um, next, I have Lori Crow. Sorry, wasn't ready. Didn't see where I was going to be on the thing. Hi, um, my name's Lori Crow. I work with Prairies Can as a senior business officer. I cover the western side of the province of the rural communities around um, uh, around Manitoba. And um, yeah, looking forward. Was really looking forward to an in-person day today, but we'll uh, definitely look forward to the next time we can catch up in person as well. But lots of great discussion today. Thanks, Lori. Uh, next, I have John Anderson. Thank you. Uh, yeah, my name is John Anderson. I work for the city of Brandon. I'm their business development specialist. Um, relatively new to the Manitoba ecosystem here. Just came over and joined the team here in September. Nice to meet you, John. Uh, next, I have Parker. Good morning, everyone. I'm Parker Yonks. I am the EDO at the arm of Pikestone. Next to that, I have Kara. 
I hope I said that right, Kara. Yes, I'm Kara Burney. I'm the EDO for the town of Carberry. Thank you. Now I have Candace. Hello, I'm Candace Murray, and uh, I'm the Economic Development Manager with the Town of Burden. Nice to meet you, Candace. Thank you. Ed? Hi, uh, I'm a counselor in the RM Hemiota, and I sit on the Economic Development Board. And in the past life, I've been an Economic Development Officer. Oh, a double bonus for them. Uh, Deborah? Hi, I'm Deborah Turner. I'm the manager of Economic Development Policies and Projects for the Municipality of Grassland. We are also an amalgamated uh, municipality, so we take in Hartney, Elgin, <clears throat> and Minto communities. Thanks, Deb. Uh, Sabine, I have you next. Hi, I'm Sabina Chorley, uh, EDO for Minidosa and area. Also Thank do marketing you. and communications, so it's kind of like a multifaceted position, but uh, keeps me going. Yeah, the you do it all. <laughs> I do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Rachel? Hi, I'm Rochelle Stanage. Sorry. Um, I'm Rochelle Stanage, and I'm the rec director for the RMS Sifton and do EDO work as well. And Marina Enns is here with me. Hi, and Marina. Your assistant CAO. Great, thank you. Uh, next, I have Ron. You can, can you hear me now? Yes. Uh, uh, Ron Knight from Hamiota Economic Development. Thank you, Ron. And I have Marina. Oh, I'm Marina. I'm actually on Rochelle's computer because mine doesn't have capability. So from RMS Sifton. Okay, great. Thank you all for introducing yourselves. I hope I didn't miss anybody. Uh, please raise your hand in the chat or use the chat and introduce yourselves if I have missed you or just give me a shout out. Uh, I'm just gonna share my screen and get things started. There we go. Everyone can see my screen. Okay. It's making some adjustments here. So for those who don't know uh, what ARMED can provide, ARMED's efforts and initiatives Firstly, sorry, ARMID collaborates with communities to build their strengths and support their economic development projects. Um, sorry, I'm just having some space issues here. Um, we take a lead on regional and provincial economic development issues and opportunities. ARMID's efforts and initiatives are aimed at fostering economic growth and sustainability in the rural areas of the province from the 53rd parallel south. Our focus is on investment development, partnership and capacity building, uh, communication and promotion. We advocate policy change and efficiencies for rural Manitoba in collaboration with Manitoba Economic Development, Investment and Trade, and now Natural Resources. Uh, the overreaching goal is to support economic development leaders, local government, First Nations, Indigenous leadership agencies, and entrepreneurs. And ARMED is dedicated to improving supports and in increasing the successes for rural economic development. So today we'll be reviewing um, what what's involved in investment readiness. Uh, we'll talk about expansion, attraction, and succession supports. Over the last 18 months, ARMED's priorities have been around investment readiness and assessing how to help municipalities and towns, cities, First Nations uh, gauge their level of preparedness. Getting to know you surveys were sent out and they were sent out approximately a year ago and resulted in 
identifying priorities uh, that were developed for ARMED to move forward in supporting you. We, we will be coming back to you with more of those surveys in the upcoming months. Um, in collaboration with our provincial agency, the Economic Development Investment Trade and Natural Resources, we are aligning with their priorities and engaging in conversation on the rural landscape. Now, uh, I just want to go through um, ARMID's, one of their priorities was uh, providing the data service that was powered by local Intel. This launched in, I guess it was the end of July out in the Steinbeck area. And I'm just going to turn it over to Michael Asante to provide a live introduction to that. All right, thanks, Diana. Hi, everyone. Um, before we go into the, into the data services, I would like to plug in this. So we're expecting our original reports. Um, as Michael said, it is done. And so it will be coming up soon. Um, the same applies to a labor market um, report that we've done. So we'll be looking at for, for it. Yeah, so our mid launched a couple of months ago launched a very comprehensive data tool for the province and also for our municipalities here in Manitoba. I would like to share my screen and then do a very quick um go over. Okay, so that we can see. Please can you see my screen? Yeah, I think there is. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank very you. Quick. Yeah. So this is our new website. Um, when you go to armecop.ca, this is the first page, the home page you see. And if you want to access our new data sites, you scroll down. For example, you come to for business, and then it takes you to this page. And then you come to explore, scroll down a bit, then explore data services, which brings you to the data services page and then you click on view community data and then that brings you to our data services page um there are two ways to go about it so the first part is what i just showed the second one is to go through the advanced rural manitoba.ca website which uh, okay, let me just wait. Just loading. Okay. A bit of technical issues here. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so this brings you to our data sites where, um, you, you know, you have basic data on um, our region, especially Rural Manitoba. But what I want to speak today on is why Rural Manitoba page and also our community page. So with that further I do, I will go to the Y Rural Manitoba page. Oh okay. Which is here. This is very to me, I think. The internet is a bit slow. Okay. So yeah, we have about seven or eight um different tools that's you know talks about why investors should come to Rural Manitoba. Um, FEX is on the logistics side, our logistics are the advantage in this province, and then our uh, demography. Um, the next one is talk, we'll, we'll talk about our resources, our vast resources that we have here, and then um, marketplace vibrancy, our skilled workforce, um, industry insights, fast growing industries and then diversity of industry. Then we have our talent pipeline as the last one. Um, let me just maybe put my video off to see if the internet service will be better here. Okay. All right. So, um, Oh, I think the internet is so slow. 
Okay, so the first one is logistics um, advantages that we have in the province. So these are provincial level tools um, that talks about our you know major um, airport network. And then also talks about our road network, um, our seaport advantage. Um, then also talks about our rail and freight network as well as um, broadband. So for the airport network, you could see that we have already um, the U40 sets at the um, Winnipeg Richardson Airport. Okay. And then this shows, you know, that we are connected to, it shows our connection to, you know, other areas in North America. Um, so not just to the province or to the other provinces in Manitoba, but I mean, in Canada, but also where we are located. And so when an, an investor wants to know more about our province, he could easily come here to see um, uh, where, we can you know get their goals connected to around North North America, so this is just uh, the provincial tool, but also we are not just focusing on the on the um, regional airports. I mean the provincial um, airports. We also have uh, regional airports here, where for example, even the they may have only one destination, so we 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 are also able to capture all that, and once you come. To let's come back to the logistics advantage. Once you come here, you see this airport overlays here. This talks about the drive time to um, the gates or to the airport. So it's between four, eight hours, two hours, and you see where exactly you could reach driving eight hours to this airport. So it's, it's a very good tool that you know speaks about our location advantages. And then the next one talks about our major um, road networks um, here in Manitoba. So you could see um, some of the major, this, this are not all, but you know, some of the major road networks. And of course, um, you could also. And these are some of the key things that we're promoting in our investment readiness toolkit as to identifying those logistics for right. investors that come into your communities. Right. And then the third one talks about our seaport network. Um, currently we've included the Port of Churchill. Initially it was um, the Thunder Bay um, site here, but we've, um, we've included the, the Port of Churchill in there. So um, you are able to see um, the areas that you could you know, ship your items to um, here in Manitoba. This up enough there. Okay. And then this, we also have tools that you know, focuses on our real network. Um, so if investors want to do business with us, they're able to see where they can ship their items by real. And this, like the default is um, you could see the connection from C and um, the C N and C P rails in Winnipeg to other parts of North America. The same applies to the broadband um services. So which part of the areas have you know which speed and which which level of data is also seen here? So an investor can come in and just you know browse through to see um, where where the highest internet services are. Mm -hmm. Then the next one talks about the our demographics where we have you know basic um, data on our population, median income, labor force participation, unemployment rates. For the labor force participation, unemployment rate and um, uh, uh, I mean, unemployment rate and labor force participation. Most the, the data is, you know, most of the times updated annually. So at the CMA levels or at the provincial levels, and so when we go to the community page, which we'll do, I will do shortly. You see that some of the data, you know, will be from the CMA instead of the um community, and so this explains why some of the data may not be available at the um, community level, but at the provincial level, we have the the, the buffer participation rate, population, median 
household income. And these are uh, updated annually. Some are updated as when the data is available. So you don't have to do anything. You just have to come here and then get the data. We also have data on residents in the province uh, where they are located. So for example, if you want to find out um, maybe by year group, so between this year and this year, maybe 42 old population, where are they located? You can search that by the percentage of people in the region or even by the number of people um, um, staying there. So you can see, and once you click on the uh, polygon, you will see the number of population there based on the targets that you set here. So this, you know, when an investor comes and wants to know where the, you know, population of the municipality or the, or the, or, or the community and where they are located, you can easily come here to do that. We also have data, of course, on household. And you can, as I said, it's very interactive, like the, um, the first one. You can also search where those with higher household income are located in the province, and it makes the investor target a certain, you know, it's easier to target certain consumers when you want, like when you know where they are located. For example, between these um, household income groups, you are able to know where they are located, percentage wise. Um, and also, you can even see by, by number. So these are, these are very inter um, interactive tools that you can play around to know more about your community at the provincial level. Um, dwelling uh, also talks about the construction um, type and period. So new construction, old construction in Manitoba, uh, whether it's single detached, uh, where they are located, and then the workforce, the provincial workforce. Um, snapshots that talks about our educational level um, and also where are uh, the residents working in the province. So you can see here. And one thing is that when you click on these three dots, you are able to see where the data is coming from. Most of this data comes from um, South Canada. And so as I went South Canada is able to release the data, it's automatically published. I mean, it comes through the tool and it's refreshed and updated. You could see the reference here, also here. And you can also actually save the, um, the infographics as image. It comes as a PNG file, and we also have accessibility text for visually impaired people if you want it in that format. This also talks about a quick availability um, to data on average housing costs, um, commuting time, mode of transport and rest. Then we comes to we come to the um, resources side where we we have our municipalities here. We we'll go further into it very soon, but this talks about how where our municipalities are allocated across the province. Um, you can see the red dots. So once you you um, move the case around, you are able to see you are able to see you know the municipalities, and you can click on the view profile. And then you do take you to their community profiles. You can search by the real municipality, you can search by um, city, you can also type in your community here and then and then um to populate here. We've received um logos from municipalities, and so these logos are added to the communities. And so if you go through and you haven't seen, seen your logo in there, I see the arm of pipe stone has already submitted their logo. So if you see when you go there, you, you see their logo for those. Who, who haven't submitted yet, we are still encouraging you to submit to us. If you go to our page, there's a link there that you can submit information. If you've added um, placeholders, and so you can always change that. I will come into more details when we go to the community profile. And so this, the next place talks about our markets, place vibrancy, of course, also very interactive. Um, where are the individual incomes, the highest income, where are they located in the province? You can also search by percentage wise, um, click in to see where, where, where they are located. And then when you click on the polygons, it tells you the number of consumers. You can also do that by age, um, also by household income, and also by household type. These are all very interactive tools that you can use to explore more about our community. So these are, these are very good tools for investors and for anyone who wants to know more about our province. And with the reason why they should locate to our province, um, we have data to local dwellings, again, construction period, the strata type, where, where are the renters, where are the big buildings? Um, you can also search all those here as well. I'm just trying to run through. 
the more bedrooms were allocated. So about four or five bedrooms were allocated in the province. And then look even local businesses. So where are the accommodation and food services located in the province? Um, financial insurance companies, where are they located? Um, of course, by number or percentages, talking about businesses in the province, you can also do that right here. So they're very interactive and you can always play with it. The next one talks about our skilled workers or labor force advantages. It's on the provincial level, we have um, education level and then um, our residents, um, industry of employment. So where they, they work, let's have the top occupations also on the right hand side. And of course, you can also search by the program type um, and when they are located in the province. And so um, if you want to know a fantasy trade, for example, you can you can scroll down to see where you can get the skill, skill set. Same applies to this and also the industry type. Okay, then I'll come to the industry insight. So this these are four negative uh, phonics code um, industry types where we have populated about almost about a thousand industries. So for example, if you want to search in the industry at all for someone who wants to explore, let's say um movie theater. Movie theater. For example, if you want to invent a movie theater or um, investment, you're able to see um information on employment by industry, you know, the number of establishments um, in the province, um, the market concentration, their, constant, um, their contribution to, to GDP, um, and then what are the average weekly uh, earnings across when it comes to movie theaters. Um, then in this, this session still talks about, you know, the financial performance, and this data is also coming from Stats Canada. So if you are preparing a business plan or you want to compare you know, your financial performance of a business to industry benchmarks, these are very good tools for you to have a look at it. And of course, you can also search where these um, movie theaters are located in, in the province, right? So you can go in and then click, okay, for example, we, we, see, we already see that there are about, in Winnipeg, there are about 11 businesses here then somewhere here to um there about two businesses there and then in random to really about two movie movie theater businesses here so you're able to just explore where these businesses are are, are located and that will um that will give you an informed decision about the markets yeah the next one talks about the the, the fastest growing industries so, so we have all industries and the yellow one talks about the, the education um, education services sectors. And so, and then the, I think the paper talks about manufacturing. And so what has been the employment growth um, between 2016 and 2022? These are very interactive, so you can actually see what is what is happening. You can actually see what is what is happening. We also we can also compare um, the traded goods, so the traded industries, so which industries do we, trade as sports uh, across our region. And if you just hover around there, the, the chart and you see the figures there. And then what are the local industries too? You can also get this data also in the list form, but it's more appealing to the eye when I prefer probably when it's in there, when the infographic is like this. So you know, of course, but you can also get it in this way. Okay, and then the next one talks about also our industry, our largest industries where they are located, um, the accredited industries, um, our local industries, of course, you can also get it in the list form where it has the uh, location content or uh, questions or market concentration. Okay. Then the last but not least is the talent pipeline. So uh, when an investor wants to look at the province, right, the person wants to look at where are they um, you know, where are the universities located? Where where are the courses? Like, what kind of courses and what kind of resources are available for industries? So, for example, here, if you come here, you see that um, well, there are education institutions are here. So, for example, if you're looking for humanities, you click on humanities, and then already you can scroll down to 
to look at um, look at where these institutions are. For example, Brandon here, I guess it's Brandon University. You were able to see the number of students enrolled in, in the humanities. Um, you come to Winnipeg, you come to um, the other um, education institutions you're able to know. So you can search by which discipline, there are a lot of disciplines here, and then where the workforce or talents is in the province. So I think this is very, very good. Um, for investors who want to know about the talent pipeline advantages of our community. I will run through first to our community pages where I think most of you are very much interested in. Um, this under this tab. So when you come here and you click my communities. And before I continue, these tools are free of charge. So you don't have to, you know, pay at least for the foundation um, data for now. Um, it's free for all municipalities. And so, for example, so when you come here to our communities, we've had um, we've done about one hundred thirty-seven um, uh, profile um, for for our, all the one hundred thirty-seven municipalities here in um, Manitoba. So you can search by the city, search by the municipality or town, just to sort it out. You can also sort by name, village. So I want to explore, since I see Tiffany's here, let's see what we, Wallace Woodward has. So for example, if you want to know Wallace Woodward, you just go here, you, you search, then Wallace Woodward comes here. They've submitted their three images of their community. So right away, you're able to have a fair idea about the community. Um, and then you have data on the economy, um, labor force, as I said, on the municipal level, the labor force is, um, you know, goes at the CMA levels or the um, economic region level because we don't get the data from at the municipal level or the sub division. We have data on unemployment rate, population, median income. Same applies to the workforce advantage as I, 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 as I explained initially. Um, every municipality has data on the education, residence industry where we are located, top occupations. So we are looking at the top occupations in the Woodward, um, Wallace Woodward area. Of, of course, also um, the residence information, individual ages, as I said, you can look at where this young population, for example, young population are, are located, um, percentage-wise or the number where they're located in the, in the municipality, um, the median income age distribution, and then when it comes to the household, again, very interactive. You just scroll to see where the highest earners are living. In the in Woodward Wallace for targeting marketing, um, household size, number of households, uh, median income. These are all data from Stats Canada, and these are very current from the latest census um, release that that was released very very few months ago. Um, this later also talks about home ownership in Woodward Wallace, and then a, a bit also about livability. So when you come down here, um, there is also um information here so for example i think woodward wallace what you should with having submitted their info for so normally when you come here there, there should be a link to your website and an email address to the edo so that when an investor visits our, our websites but there's a lot of traffic there when when we launch the 10 people visit as a lot so when they're interested in your municipality you just have to submit your your information and then um, you put it here, you're able to come, click, and then text them to your website. So I think one is good with having submitted yet, so please submit, and then we can update that. Just an example there, Michael, would be that somebody needs to send a contact person for that particular site, because I did see it was Sedem that was the contact. Is yeah. that correct? No. We just, we just need it identified, yeah. uh, the person identified that should get that yeah, first then, contact. Yeah, of that first contact. Paul, for example, and let me see how they've, they've, okay, so yeah, so it's like this, right? So once you're able to provide your link, right, to to us, we're able to link it to our website. So when you, when they come in and they click, they're able to go directly to to your community website. So so they're able to find out more, more, like more information about you or uh, about your community, they're also able to connect to you, call your community directly, um, so email your community directly. So please, if you haven't yet submitted your um, images of your municipality or 
um, logos, please do and let's update this. Um, yeah. So far as for Wallace Woodworth, we would have sent all of that with the input, with the pictures that were up there and everything. So it's just been missed. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I will just question. We'll again. go back to yeah. have a look at that. Thanks, Tiffany. Right. Yeah. So these are where you can find all this information. These are, as I said, free of charge. Um, and this is the first phase. Um, in subsequent phases, you are looking at adding different features to this. And so please link your communities to these profiles and then um, try and utilize them. Thanks. And Michael, I just have a couple of questions about um, where we get our, our data. Where do we pull that information and uh, how often is it updated? Yeah, so most of our information comes from the Stats Canada. So Statistics Canada, yeah. So majority, I think 90% or 99% or 98% comes from Majority um, Stats Canada. So that's where we get our data. And um, after when they release, it gets updated. And so, uh, as I said, the labor force participation unemployment rates at the CMA and the economic region um, level are updated annually. Some are also updated as of when, when it is released. But as I said, you don't have to really do anything. Just as like, when um, starts can update it, the tools automatically get the data and then updates, updates by itself. This is better than, you know, like, um, waiting four years to get new census data and 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 um, stuff like that. So yeah, yearly updates um, for some of the data and also some when as of when the um, starts come releases um, information. Let me stop sharing my screen. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me. Um, Oh, Michael, you're on mute. Oh, sorry. <laughs> There's also a link on our website where you can request data. And so if this fund, the foundation data is not enough, you can also request specialized data for, from, from, from us. And I'll be, I'll be able to make that available to you. All right. And any questions for Michael right now, or we can take questions throughout the, the whole session. Just thought I'd share that out if anyone wants to ask him. Eric? I'm around. I uh, just wanted to ask with regards to the airports, um, would there also be data regarding the Minot Airport and the Regina Airport? Uh, the only reason I ask is because in our region, it's actually closer for us to go to Regina than it is Winnipeg. Well, I I think that so for for example, um and your region is I think Melita, right? So yeah, they yeah, you bet. provincial level tools of right. So oh let me just share my screen. That's how this you can see what I was talking about. These are provincial level tools. Okay. Share. You can see my screen. Yes. So for example, Currently, it, it looks like the flight is from Winnipeg Airport to Regina, right? And let me see. This one is okay. The par. So probably, yeah. So currently, it doesn't show um, your flight connection to, to Regina. Now, um, these, these airports are not... So the airports... Okay. We we have some regional airports here, but I don't think we, we've captured um the one from Melita yet yet. But currently it shows that you have to fly from Winnipeg. Okay, no, nope, uh I got it. It turns out I was I was just being mistaken with uh one of the extra tabs. So I appreciate it, Michael. Yeah, Brandon to to okay. Yeah, Brandon to answer connection there, but yeah. Not all the, uh, but we have some, some of the small, small um, airports here, of course. It shows them externally, the smaller airports. Interesting. Yeah, some. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some are, some of the um, only one, one destination, for example. It's definitely a spot where you can spend some time. And yeah. I think I learned something new every time, <laughs> which is great. Yeah, yeah. you can just go through and then see where the airport connections are and uh, yeah but currently the depart and transform yeah 
So one of the things that we are still figuring out is what the phase two, three, four, five of this is, because there's so much potential and there are limitations based on the Stats Canada data and the um, MZ now, I still Lightcast. can't remember their name. Lightcast. Yes, Lightcast uh, data and those sorts of things. So um, as people use it more and they have ideas and suggestions, it would be great for you to you know pass those along to Michael. Um, where they ultimately fit into things will depend upon a lot of things like finding funding for enhancements and um, what what we hear most about and those sorts of things. Well, I got kicked out of Zoom for a minute there, so I don't know if Michael mentioned this, so I apologize if I'm repeating things. But uh, one of the things that's really, really nice about this particular tool is that Invest Canada recently launched a national site uh, with data that's focused at provincial markets and uh, major metropolitan areas. So Toronto, Montreal, Calgary, Winnipeg, Vancouver, those sorts of, of major markets. And all of this data is aligned right up to that. So if someone goes to the Invest Canada site and then they decide to start to explore Manitoba, not only does it link to Winnipeg, it also links to this. And so we're able to use it as a potential investment attraction tool for someone who's really looking to be out of a major market and into a smaller, more uh, rural center for whatever their investment may be. So that alignment right up to the federal level is uh, truly unique for our province. Great, yeah. thanks. That's my yeah. Thank you both. Uh, I just wanted to mention too, the data site for the uh, Advanced Manitoba site, sorry, is uh, with 137 municipalities on it presently. If your material hasn't been submitted, remember to uh, contact one of your EBAs or uh, send an email directly to specialprojects at armed.com to get your information in. There's also a link at the end of that page um, Michael had shared earlier. You could see where you could add information and get in contact with us. So regardless of whether your pictures are on your uh, municipal site, your, your data is there. So just, we'd like you to fine tune it a little bit more. Um, Go ahead, Michael. Yeah, I think that's all from, from my side. Okay. okay, I'm just going to get back to sharing my screen. There, can you guys see my screen again? Yes. Yeah. Great. Okay, so we've talked about our uh, new project. I'm just going to go back a slide or two here. Diana, I just to, yes. We've got all your speaking notes and stuff as well. Oh, okay. I'll switch that. There, are we back in business? I just wanted to bring to everyone's attention. Um, we've also been, as we've moved along through the year, we have our data site that you've now seen. We were on uh, Invest Canada tours throughout the region. Sorry about that. And the Invest Canada's uh, tours were in held in nine municipalities and locations were chosen by Invest Canada. And their interest was in reviewing community investment opportunities, investment readiness. So partners attended the tours. Uh, they were, the partners were Economic Development Board Secretariat and Invest Manitoba. Um, something else that Charlene had been working towards was community. We all work on community consultation, but uh, this particular project brought her into community on labor and immigration workforce development. And that was in the Russell and area uh, mm -hmm. to support readiness and labor force security. And now Charlene, would you like to add a little bit to that? 
Uh, sure. So these efforts are ongoing as far as local communities partnering with neighboring municipalities and First Nations uh, to plan forward for a strategic initiative approved by the province uh, relating to immigration. So Dauphin and surrounding municipalities um, have, have uh, a draft acceptance from the province as far as this immigration pathway. And currently um, we're working with, with Russell and six other, well, it's Russell Binsgarth and six other municipalities and a local First Nation towards a similar initiative. So this really models around um, Morden, um, Morden's um, community strategic initiative and sent um, partnership with the uh, the Winkler area. Churchill has an initiative. So several communities are, are working together and just really exciting in terms of that progress. Thank you. Um, one more thing I wanted to bring up was uh, travels to uh, MIPAM conference. So what is MIPAM? So it's the premier real estate event held annually in Keynes, France. It's a forum for face-to-face -face discussion with real estate professionals, developers, investors, architects. Um, Margot attended that. That was, I believe, in March of the year. I've only been there for just over 10 months now. And uh, Margot, uh, she provided us feedback with uh, information as to there was 26,800 delegates, 6,400 investors, 80 of the top 10 uh, of the top 100 real estate investors. And uh, they represented 2.6 trillion euros and over 100 countries and thousand companies were represented. This was a pilot project. It was uh, in the works with uh, Economic Development Winnipeg uh, Canadian Real Estate Association and the Manitoba Real Estate Association. And uh, definitely an opportunity to expand uh, Manitoba's horizons. We're also working or have uh, submitted an application with Can Can Export, Armed, of course, uh, pursuing the foreign direct investment training opportunities for rural. And hopefully, we're successful with that program, and we hear something soon, and potentially could be delivered online in the new year. So just another project that we're working on. Again, I'll just if yes, I can interject for a second on MIPM, um, because I think since we originally wrote this, we have confirmed that we will be moving forward with MIPM in 2024. Uh, the first planning meeting with our partners is next week. So um as I usually say when I'm talking to people, readiness is a word you'll be sick of hearing me say, because it's all about readiness. We don't want to take any community and involve them in something that they're not ready for and have them spend money unwisely, have them commit resources in a way that's not going to be effective for them, and potentially actually set them back by um, doing too much too soon, too fast. And so readiness is really uh, um, the word that we look to all of the time as we bring people in into different projects. So one of the advantages of the toolkit we're going to talk about later is helping you get investment ready. And then once you are investment ready, then MIPM becomes something that's available and an option to you. So um, you'll hear more from us about MIPM, you know, in the coming weeks um, early into January as we're determining exactly what the presence is going to be there. Uh, so stay tuned on that front. But um, again, it's readiness, 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 whether we're talking about investment or whether we're talking about immigration or tourism, it's it's really all about timing. Thank you, Margo. So now that was a great uh, lead into what is investment readiness and typically it refers to municipalities ability to attract uh, effectively uh, investment capital for various projects and initiatives. So as Margot said, readiness varies and uh, we're not we're not saying that you have to be investment ready on a capacity that's large and you're attracting global investment, your readiness can be right in your own community and uh, it can be expanding opportunities within Manitoba coming your way. So it definitely is, it varies and it's uh, unique to each community and to that community's financial stability. So economic plans, 
uh, infrastructure and services, regulatory environment, business friendliness, uh, so meeting permitting and zoning processes that can be made easier for investors. So community support, have you included public engagement, political buy-in, uh, community development, data and information gathering, availability of data about the municipality, uh, partnerships, collaboration with private sector and partners, nonprofits, stakeholders, and expertise in the investment projects. Have you determined your risk management? So demonstrating the ability to manage and mitigate risk associated with investment. And the, of course, includes the political side and the economic factors. Accountability and transparency. So establish the mechanics for transparency transparency and accountability in how investments are managed and monitored. So business investment attraction is a strategy that involves identifying pot potential investors and attracting businesses, investment, investment into a community. This strategy often involves focused efforts to attract investors from outside of the community, including foreign direct investment. Uh, what's suitable for your community? How strong is your economic base? Do you understand your economic opportunities? Is there skilled workforce? Um, access to markets and infrastructures. And going back to Michael's presentation on our, our data platform, you can see some of, get, uh, see and gather some of that information. So understanding the process, uh, the strategies, the conditions, how to meet them, how to attract that environment, how to problem solve, what are the choices, how do you implement these changes and opportunities. So of course, identifying or considering location and size of your community, the type of quality of your infrastructure, the aging infrastructure, the amenities and quality of life. Those are all things that are, are very attractive to investment. Determine those available pieces of land within your community, their proximity to markets and supplies, the amount of uh, labor force again, and the transportation networks, which are key. Build a strong team. Include the real estate brokers, the property owners, the developers, the local government, the private businesses, and the economic development officers. The purpose of investment attraction strategy action plan is to provide the analysis, the strategy, and the tools required to attract suitable and desired investment to your community. So we'll talk about organizational capacity. Uh, one of the first steps in business attraction is how to assess how investment ready is your community. So we all feel, uh, I'd like to know how many people in the room have, have already done some of these steps. Where are you with your organizational capacity? Throw it in the chat if you have a question. I'll just continue on. Um, so organizational capacity, again, is what's your relationship with the business community? Uh, do you have a business investment plan? Again, uh, Eric has a community profile. And well done, Eric. That's the starting point. You have to assess your community. Investment attraction, marketing, and site selectors and investment inquiries. Are you prepared? Ultimately, these assessments help uh, a community identify gaps, and that's what we're really looking for, the readiness process, and how can we aid in prioritizing the next steps, and that's what Arbit's here to help you with. So understanding land use and uh, working closely with your planning district. So assessing the municipality's land use policies is critical, and what is the available land for in for our potential investors. And that's something that Armed is actually seeking out to find more information about. That was something also that Invest Canada is very interested in. So this involves zoning regulations, land availability, aligning the land uh, with the municipal development goals, community uh, assets. So have you identified them? What are the strengths in your community? community? And again, that where are the educational institutions? How far is it to travel to those locations? Those are the questions you have to ask yourself and have an inventory. Business retention and expansion is another key to this whole toolkit. Um, you want to know what's available in your community, who's investing, who's ready to leave, 
take the time to do a business retention and expansion survey. It's well worth it in your community. Investing in these programs at a local level can expand your community and help you thrive. Also supply chain opportunities. Are you aware of the supply chain opportunities and needs uh, potential for other industries to come into your community? Identify them and the opportunities. You'd be surprised where you have clusters. Then we talk about infrastructure capabilities and evaluating the municipality's infrastructure. And again, uh, determine that transportation gateway Understand your utilities, your digital connectivity, which is very limited in some communities, again, to ensure it can support the needs of the potential investors in business. We move into the business regu regulatory environment, creating a transparent, efficient, and business-friendly regulatory environment. I'm not sure how many have applied for the CMHC HALF program, but they asked some really good, strong questions about your municipal governance. And I feel that was a, a very good uh, strategy to, to work towards. So many municipalities are not prepared for these opportunities of engagement from housing to industry. So if you can be aware of it, that just grows your community. Stakeholders, uh, it's important to engage with those stakeholders. Conduct that market research and promote municipal advantage to attract potential investors. I just wanted to share an example of, um, a, I guess it was a promotional piece that was used. Uh, which community was this? I believe it's Dauphin. And examples of improvements are for roads and utility upgrades. Your industrial park could look like this if, <laughs> we all have those uh, spontaneous things that have to be established quickly if, if you have investment coming into your region. So again, it's acknowledging challenges and gaps. What are your constraints? Um, aging infrastructure, are you prepared for those investments coming in your, your back door? I'm not sure everybody is. Sometimes that includes water systems and utilities. Are you aware of, of what your water capacity is? What your natural gas capacity is? What are the shortfalls? And again, funding. Is there a budget? What's, what's the funding opportunities for growth in your community? Again, are there any grants? Do you do it independently? Do you do it regionally? Climate change, again, is another... Um, target to prepare for, preparing infrastructure that can withstand the climate change and impacts of flooding, extreme weather. You've got it all here, problem solvers. We'll have that session another day, problem solvers 101, economic development. <laughs> Many municipalities need to enhance their resilience in this regard and stay connected with your municipal council if uh, you are working as an economic development officer. So technology and integration, have you in integrated smart technology into your infrastructure? Are there lot sensors for traffic management or energy efficiency systems? Significantly determine the gaps and seek out the experts for those resources. Some municipalities may lack the technical expert and capacity for these efficiencies, but training and uh, planning and staying very connected with your planning team. Be aware of the regulatory hurdles. Navigate the process at the local level with your federal government or provincial government. Stay in touch. Community engagement, again, is gaining community support to address the concerns for potential disruptions of infrastructure. Uh, balancing the infrastructure development with environmental sustainability, such as mitigating population and protecting your natural habitats. These can pose as gaps that municipalities must address. Supply chain disruptions, again, uh, can affect the ability of, of construction, of manufacturing, and impact infrastructure in general. So I, I'm just getting to the point that identifying these challenges and gaps is the first step in creating a comprehensive infrastructure development plan 
to address those specific municipal needs. We want to keep you resilient. So uh, that was my discussion on the regulatory framework of business. And it's always about the message of streamlining the process for those expansion opportunities and your preparedness. The permits and licensing is key. Now, investment promotion, marketing the municipality's potential, uh, online community profiles. That's definitely something I've shared with you. We've shown you uh, the opportunity to, to connect with Armid on that level. Um, we've got a picture here of Margot. I'm not sure if Margot's still on the call, if she wanted to chat a little bit about this. Uh, she was out identifying potential business. I'm still here. Um, Great. I, I do need to drop off after this for a few minutes and then I'll be back. Um, in, this is at the economic or inter, the economic forum of Americas in Montreal. It's a conference that we've attended twice. And in fact, I'll be going back to a, a meeting that they've invited me to on uh, renewable resource, renewable resources and energy in a couple of weeks. So that's me sitting on the left, and in the middle is, um, oh, which is which, uh, Deaver, Nala, and uh, Mabruki, Machanga. They're, um, pe they, one is in Calgary, one is in Montreal. They do a lot of work in African countries, and so they have been facilitating uh, introductions to a variety of different companies and countries and and. Um, ministries in Africa opening up potential trade and investment conversations. And then on the far right is Trevor Thomas. Trevor is um, with Norway House, um, Bison Homes. He also works with uh, Dreamcatcher Promotions and has just um, received a promotion. I don't know exactly what his title is. I have to go and find it. But he basically is the chief's uh, representative on economic development and partnerships in the southern part of the province. So while Norway House itself is outside of our area, uh, they do a lot of economic development of ac activity in south of 53. And so uh, Trevor is very, very involved in all of that. Trevor was one of two um, individuals from Manitoba that we took to the International Economic Forum of Americas. That's a, a conference we attend annually with uh, CEDEM. And the other company we took was Cypher Env Environmental and Todd Burns. And Todd actually spoke on one of the panels. So um, it's been quite a successful conference for us in being able to build all of those relationships out. When we talk about readiness, it's also about our mid readiness. And so we're building out those networks and those connections so that as communities become ready, we're ready to be able to help them take the next step as well by having those networks built. So that's um, that's the context of that particular picture. Thank you. So collaboration and partnership is something that's quite uh, critical to any project, uh, definitely any organization, any volunteer organization, nonprofit, uh, partner with your neighboring municipalities and organizations and, and benefit uh, with your investment readiness opportunities. Do you know, do you have those stakeholder agreements with the local property owners uh, in your communities? Once you've identified land that's available for those opportunities of growth, uh, I think there's great potential. I just wanted to share with you uh, our toolkits. This is what's coming out in the next month, month and a half. Uh, we've completed the strategic planning toolkit, the tracking and measuring economic success and the investment attraction readiness. We've got two that are a little bit further behind. So three are, are up and running and uh, we're in the final stages of of the uh, business retention and expansion and the marketing your community and attracting business investment. So we're excited to have that uh, launched in the next little while. Uh, again, these toolkits do align with the EDAM community edge training. And uh, I know there's a lot of that going on and we find that that's you know, crucial elements to economic development planning and measuring. Now to share with you uh, supporting supporting us in supporting you. So how can we do that? How can we work best with you? 
we look for those rural stories. We uh, are working on attracting investment and we are trying to stay uh, the forefront as your resource in economic development. Um, we want to help you de determine who who is looking and who is considering investment and what is investment? Is investment right for your community? Have you determined what your community is looking for? There's always the opportunity to say, no, that investment doesn't work in our community. Have you determined how many jobs it'll create? There's opportunities for you to reach out to us before uh, investors actually purchase property and we can connect you to those resources within Invest Manitoba and Invest Canada. And we're here to help you overcome those barriers. Why are businesses leaving? Um, what are you doing for recruitment challenges? What other information do you need? Share it with us. We'll do our best to work with you. We learn from each other. Now, I just wanted to show you one more slide here. Uh, another another slide that gives you a little bit of uh, a brochure or an idea or a snapshot of what's going on in different communities. So uh, as mentioned, during our Invest Canada tours, we started an inventory collection of site locations. Each of these forms linked to uh, be circulated and uploaded with community information. Invest Canada receives theirs and it is shared with the uh, Investment Trade and Economic Development Board Secretariat as well as ARMID. We also have one for under 39 um, acre lots. So it's important for these to be identified and shared out on a level that is with the province and also the federal government. To be prepared is to know what is your strategy for goals and how do we align. So align with the provincial strategies is another consideration for communities best interest. Um, those checklists, going through the checklists, our toolkit offers a checklist that'll get you to this point where you can determine where do you go from here. Call us, uh, make time to identify those advantages. Positive for investors. So conduct conduct a survey, an analysis, identify and analyze targets. Um, I, attracting investment from another country is usually referred to as foreign direct attract uh, investment. And that, it, that occurs when a company in one country invests in a company located in another. As mentioned previously, the attracting foreign direct investment is a most effective tool for communities. Our idea is not to encourage foreign direct investment uh, for each region, of course, but we're definitely here to support you on every level. So if it's that internal investment from community uh, businesses that are expanding, how do you retain those businesses? Why would they leave? It, it's all about just readiness for growth. And uh, also again, determining your skill force and shortages. What are the current housing supports? Would you be able to find housing for 50 individuals if foreign direct investment or any type of global investment happened or national investment happened? Are there incentives? Do you have incentives? Lots to consider. Um, I'm sure we'll have some questions. What are your current restraints? What are your gaps? If anyone wants to throw questions in the chat box, that would be great. Um, Deanna, Eric has um, just shared a comment mm -hmm. uh, in, in the chat. Uh, so Eric's question, there have been a lot of steps as I do not possess the facilitation experience to lead this discussion with municipal government or much training knowledge around investment attraction readiness, but it is a work in progress. And it definitely is. And it doesn't have to be foreign direct investment. And it could be uh, the business down the road and supply chain efforts made by somebody who's moved out of that business. Or uh, it could be 
how are you working with them on the level of bringing in a cooperative and it's a group purchase business now from employees from internal how do we just stay engaged with our community in efforts to keep growth happening we don't want to lose businesses out of our community we're not all going to have foreign direct investment coming to our community but just to be aware Manitoba is more identified than it has been before. So are we prepared? We have very uh, reasonable cost of living in Manitoba. So Manitoba is viewed as a, a great location. Again, with our uh, tools for the uh, Advanced Rural Manitoba website, live, uh, I guess going to look at the what's it called the living the opportunity of lifestyle is maybe going to be a next option for us so how do you promote the lifestyle in that community any other questions i think there is there is another one in the chat box so Minidosa's challenge is a lack of inventory for space being in the valley. We need to extend to the RM. Is there direction on creating a plan between the town and RM? So definitely there's uh, opportunity for that to be discussed further. And speaking to the point of actually having a memorandum of un understanding between the municipalities is critical as well. Right from your rec center on to other used uh, assets or infrastructure in the town. It just keeps things cleaner. It keeps growth and momentum moving within a community. Any other um, questions? This is yes, Ron. Uh, I guess I'm wondering how we stack up uh, provincially with our hydro costs. Uh, historically, that has been one of the main drivers for industry moving to Manitoba. Uh, is that still the case? Uh, how, do you have any numbers to show the uh, different costs, if you will, for industry to, uh, uh, you know, throughout the various provinces? Because, you know, we we, uh, we don't have the climate that you can get in Eastern Canada, you don't have, mm -hmm. or Western Canada. So I'm just, I'm just trying to think what is going to be our main driver. And, and when you get re requests for information, Exactly. Um, interesting question and definitely uh, something I will, I think that Armid should have a better lens on. But um, after the presentation, I want to sh I'm going to share out our toolkit. And I also have a document of what uh, the province invest Manitoba is looking for when a site selector comes. Those are the things that we need you to know <laughs> when you have these folks randomly uh, calling or contacting someone at your office. How do you deal with that? Uh, what do we need to know on capacity? What do we need to know about wastewater, uh, land or lot sizes? There's an awful lot. What is your uh, capacity for hydro? Do we have the transmission to that area for growth? Do you have the water? Still a lot more to review, but there's a lot of good questions to be answered in our uh, toolkit. Any other questions today about Michael's presentation or the presentation on investment readiness? And I know you folks in the room are the experts and I'd love to hear about investment opportunities going on in your region if you have anything to share. Well, reach reach out to us and uh, email or contact your your EDA in your region for sure, and uh, we look forward to hearing more from you. Thank you, everyone. Bye, everyone. See you, Laurie.